that's what you're told. And I actually, when I was in Avaya, I never tried something else. So I had to close one to open the other. Control E, Control G. Right? Yeah. However, well, that's, that's not does. true. No, you can yeah, open multiple. Like, before you can tell us, why would you open up Jenna? Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but people, if you want to people switch like to have a station the least, That's the only way. <laughs> or the <laughs> list of previous commands. That's the only, yeah. That's what, the commands? Well, no, the, the Jedi is good if you want to sort. If you want to sort. If you want to find somebody's name that you can't find. And not only that, but you have the list of previous commands. And in general, you only have the previous one. I use Jedi for everything except Tracer. Okay. So the trick is, I mean, if you want to open up multiple, you or, maybe, or maybe multiple yeah. terminal emulators. Right. Maybe you want to compare two stations. Right. Right. Go into properties. So exactly. Right. So you know, you go. Yeah, you you need to go to. Just keep uh, actually adding the same connection multiple yeah. times. Yeah. I just change my port sometimes. Yeah. So you just need to to yeah, create multiple entries yeah. here. I have yeah. like. I think I have like five on each. If you wanna. <laughs> have multiple connections to the same CN in ASA, uh, that's possible if you come here to connections and add multiple entries here. Like for example, let's do it with this lab. This I think one, you showed me that. This one is 10.4. Ten ten By default, ASA Actually, only has one. And that's great. why if you right. want to open up Jedi, but you have Terminal Emulator open, you have to close Terminal Emulator to open Jedi, right? right? But if you add yeah. multiple entries here, no. Let's oh, let's add so no, these no, ones as well. Yeah. Let's actually add so two, one more. Now it's 50.2. 50.2. Yeah, that's. Yeah. 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 So what I could do mm -hmm. now? You can open it three times in different ways if you wanted to. What is that? Now I have one. That one is terminal emulator. That's why the Lord did for today. <laughs> I could open another one, another terminal emulator. The, the lords of, of flat push. If you learn on terminal emulation, Jedi is just like, ah. But if you have to sort something, it's all set. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Why is that? But learn. now eventually yeah. you'll get. Administ administrative? And that's it, it's better yeah. for administration. Yeah. It's yeah. just not for maintenance. Maintenance so is so the way. I like them both ways. It doesn't matter. I'll do the, I'll do the death wishes. Yeah, because I keep getting wrong buttons escaped. You see, I have another one here. I keep following that. This one is useful if you want to compare things. Right? And now let's open Jedi. I live almost exclusively in Putty. Yeah, I use Putty. I'm so used to having multi windows. Yeah. You see, so right now I have one Jedi, two turn on the You can even do control G. Yeah, I know, but it wasn't working. <laughs> oh really? Oh, maybe it was oh, set up on the Maybe it wasn't. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, I that's yeah, no, I know the chart, but it wasn't working. Yeah. That's why I had to go there. So the, I I do Jedi rock for sorting. What did you say about listen commands that were previously entered? Oh yeah, in Jedi. Oh, in Jedi, you have these. Oh yeah, they're already in there, which is great. Yeah. Type them out. Yeah. But however, in terminal emulator, you only have the previous. You can hit the up arrow. Right. Yeah, in the terminal emulator, you can do a shift R. And hit enter. Yeah. And then shift R tells you the previous one. But only the previous one. But only the previous one. And it doesn't let you really modify it. It just depends on the relation that you're using. If you're using 513, it allows you to change the last. Ah, like for example, 10, and that doesn't allow it. Ah, that's good to know. Now that's a trick. Because, yeah, I that's think that's a trick to me too. That one, well, that one yeah, the that's gonna be multiple? used. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, that's the best. Yeah. Let me tell you, it is the best. Yeah, yeah. I think it's different like station, you can change the station all the same. Let me see. Let me see. If I change now, you can only use one. Oh, you know what the best is? <laughs> when you have a person that something is not working right, uh -huh. and you're like, and they're the oh, member of the same group, and you Ask them for a, a peer of theirs, and, and then you open up their station. You could do a side by side comparison, or like when you're looking at trunk groups, you know, you set up an IP trunk or something, and you want to see why one's not working, but the other one is. It's invaluable. Yeah, it's invaluable. Yeah, you see. So I'm using terminal emulation. When you took this course, take a look at this. I'm using right now. I want to make sure that I'm using 513. Okay. 
And by the way, if you want to ever change it, you just go with new term. New term, and it allows you to change the type without having to log off and all that. That's good. No, new term. New term. At the front. And it allows you to change the type of emulation, terminal type. So if you go with 5.13, and then, for example, let's do one of those long commands, change IP network read region. Yeah. One. You do whatever, blah, 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 that's the last command. So if you go with shift R, right. and now if you only want to change that one for something else, you go with shift tap. Oh, shift tap. And it removes that last command. That last. Nice. Yeah, and yeah, that's what, very useful. What was it? Shift tap? Shift tap at the same time. And then it just removes. Let me see if I do it again. Yeah, you see it removes the, the last one, the previous thing. The previous thing. When I took a CM, a CM course, when the first time I took it, Revive, and I was new to Revive, this was back in 97, 98. And that time, CM was at one Okay, let's continue here. Next lab is going to be. Oh, actually, no, actually, I'm skipping something. Let's see, actually, if you're able to answer this question. Page 85. Yeah, it was old. Page 85, what so would you say? At that point, you only learn new things from people who have taken the course at What do you think? So is it a straight address? What does that mean by Wait. Oh. Wait, when employee No, no. not all of them. It's only one of them. The login name. The login name. Yeah. That's the identifier of the user yeah. in the data. Yes. Yeah. Exporting data in bulk. So you could also export things, not only import things, in system manager. But you could export things like, for example, network routing policies. That's what we're getting to see there. And also you could export the host name resolution table, which you probably have no idea what that is about. But we'll see it. It's, like, it's a kind of an internal DNS table that Session Manager offers. Uh, and you could export that all of that data to an XML file. Here in page 88, you see that you're exporting that to an XML file. And here you see the XML files with all of the information in routing. You're probably not used to these uh, names like entity links or zip domains or regular expressions. We're going to be covering that tomorrow when we create routing between the labs. But here they're just exporting all of that data to XML files. And we have a lab where you're actually going to export users. Release 6.2 and, and before, there was, no two, there was no way in the GUI to export users. You had to go to, through Linux and run a script to export users. Starting with release 6.3, they added the functionality to the GUI, so now it's super easy. You select the users that you want to export and click on export selected users, or if you want to export all of them, you just go with export all users. And that's it, you run the job. As a matter of fact, usually if I have to create users, let's say uh, in bulk, new users, what I do is I manually create one user with everything I need. You know, I take the time to create that user with all the communication profile, and then I export that one user, and that generates the Excel file with that one user, and I use that one as a reference. It's always easier than having an empty file with no reference, you know? So I think it's a good practice to do it like that. Anyways, in the lab, you're gonna export uh, all users, and then you're gonna get that file, get it to your computer, open it with Libre, and what they wanted, want you to do here is modify a login name so that when you try to later import that file, something fails. Mm -hmm. And the idea of the, fi of the exercise to see you is, to, is, that, is that you see something yeah. failing, pretty much. And, and it's gonna give you an error, and it's gonna tell you why is that it failed, you know? And it's gonna tell you that the, there's an invalid login name, because what they wanted to do is remove the uh, add sign. Uh -huh. So it's gonna fail, 
and then if you fix it and try to import again it should work however those users are already in the database mm -hmm. so it's just gonna give you warning saying that those users are already there yeah we'll just but, for that one there. yeah but give you give that try go ahead and start in page 90 and let me know how that goes Is it too cold or it's good? No, it's good. Cold is better. Cold you know better? people sleep less when it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> if I were an instructor, it would be frigid in my class. <laughs> and I wouldn't allow coats. <laughs> no coats. Teach out daughters in Alaska. Me and teacher. And you force yeah. them to come in with shorts on and chain <laughs> tops. Yeah. I would, I would <laughs> no, <laughs> no long sleeves. No. I've been in enough classes. And I've taught some on a small scale. Yeah, I, I know that. Be throwing candy at people. Have you ever heard of BMX? Do you remember them? Horse mouth? Like, yeah. BMX Octel. It was yeah, BMX Octel. So yeah. I worked for them with their, their classes. They were awesome. You remember a guy named Joe Pelecci? No. Oh, okay. This he was sick. Like, yeah, I was going to well, say, I was, dude. Well, no, no. Baker Audio Teleguy. Yeah. Yeah. Because you were the Octel's skill set at the yeah. horrible yeah. place we before a, I came in. Yes, I was. We so, used yeah, a BMX I, system uh, or Octel. 100 map something it was map. back in the 80s like in the late no, 80s map 100 is, uh, that's the it's not map. yeah yeah no it was no, no, BMX 100 it was Opcom that we had used initially oh, and then it became op, then it became BMX then op, op Octel yeah I remember that no it was yeah. before yeah. it was prior <laughs> yeah I worked a bunch of those serenades. You never got on the 250 side, did you? You were a 200, 300. No, 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 right? no, you're right. I didn't when they murdered. Yeah, I did not. Yeah. God, we used to go down to Delta at 2 o'clock in the morning. It was up great. It's feeding floppy disk for like two hours. And you just mm -hmm. fall asleep. And you're beep, beep. And get, take a floppy yeah. out. Put it was, over, put another one in. I was doing maintenance at Chick fil A this one. one morning. Oh, that's on a great. Sunday place. morning. It was a great place. Oh, it's so and good. I called, uh, I was rebooting the damn thing. It didn't come back forever. So I called support and Charlie at Octel Support, guy that had been there forever. Yeah, yeah, I remember just, Charlie. He, was, he, 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 he came across across the phone like Santa Claus. And he started laughing. He asked me, how long has it been? And I was like, it's been over 10 minutes. <laughs> and he just started to belly laugh like Santa Claus at me. He's like, go get some coffee, have breakfast. <laughs> you got a while. I'm like, oh, God. Yeah, you, that was, man, that's when you got support. You, that, their support was just... It was incredible. That was awesome. It was one product to learn. Yeah, like one, three parts uh, of the platform. One somewhere product. I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah, let's see. It's, uh, looks like you did one too. Just yeah. two yeah. months out oh. or something. You guys came out as a... Uh, no. Zex. That's interesting. Well, then I guess we should open the new one. Yeah. The Libre. I'm saving it to the desktop. After you do the extract, I didn't extract to the desktop. Yeah, let's see. There's the export file. Yeah, since it's a zip, it wants to open it with WinRAR. Should I buy it online? Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. And zip that one. Buy it online. And then. You're going to notice okay, that when you export, a system it creates both an XML file and an yeah. Excel file. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's see, who made a change? Greg will find. Okay. Okay. Yeah, do an open with. I'm, I'm going to screw up the wool palms. It's a pleasure. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was a wrestler in Mexico somewhere. <laughs> oh, that's Lucha Libre. Nacho. Nacho Libre. <laughs> it's Cuba Libre. Cuba Libre, now we're talking. A little rum and coke action. Right, and then I guess uh, let's save my little add new user.
attention. Now let's do the import. Import. Save the file. Import. JPC. Pointers. Excel. Files. Okay. Okay, that's good. Do it. Scheduled, pending execution, running. Ah, yeah, I got 10 warnings, like you said. Well, so far. Okay, still run 16 warnings. I probably get like 24 warnings out of the 27 user records. And you're importing the one we, well, without the ad sign? Well, I did, I did a few things. I did two that didn't have the, I took the ad sign off, uh -huh. and I actually uh -huh. added a new one. Uh -huh. A brand new one, so it should give me. Let's see. Okay, partial failure was the uh, the the. There were 27 user records that had 24 warnings, and two errors. The two errors were the, the two people that removed the ad sign. And then one that was. Successful. And one that was successful, which makes sense because it, because that was 27, 24, two and one is 27. So now if I go to. Done. I have to show all. So I have to <coughs> yeah, there he is. Nacho Libre at muchosnachos.com. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> and the will ponds are gone. Good. Oh no, they're not gone. But they didn't come but they didn't get uploaded. They didn't get removed, but nothing got changed because they were fa they failed. So that creates a file, failure file. Now that would probably be placed in the same directory that I had imported it from. In the, no, that actually it's a file in System Manager that you could download from System Manager. Uh, Let me show you. Okay. So if you go go back to Manage Users Import, um, more actions, yeah, Import Users. Okay. And if you scroll down and locate the job with the partial failure. That would be this one. Is that the one? With, That's the yeah. one with the 24 and two, yeah. And two errors. So if you select that one, and actually, no, select the job. Oh, click on it. Click yes. on it. Can cancel that because you click on the link. Oh. So select the, the, the job, or as you said, cl click here. Click here, okay. And click on view job. And right there is where you could download. Oh. However, it's going to be an XML file. It's not so going to be an Excel file. Will it be able to open in Libre? Or It'll no? be, no. Oh, so no, I, it's going to be. I can't manipulate it. You would, could, you would need to do it in WordPad or Notepad, but it's going to be an XML file now. Give it a try. Yeah, let's see. It opened it up with WordPad, and now if you I see can, it's not that. But I can do Control F for fine. Absolutely. Maybe I can do F Will Pond. That's one of them. There. And I see it. That was th you see the at sign is missing. Uh huh. So I'll go in and put it in. Uh huh. And what about the other one? The other one's J Wolf. There he is. Now uh, is that the only two places, or could there be more? Let's see. Nope, that's it. That's it. And then make sure that you s save 
Do I have to do a special save as, or just sit, let's just let's save. try to save it like that, just like that. And no, yeah. So it's let's see. I'll just call it fixed. But make sure that you're not saving it as a text document. Let's right. see if it allows to save as an XML. Oh, no, it doesn't. No. So WordPad is probably not going to be an option. Open it with Notepad. Notepad. Yeah. That's under accessories, right? Yeah, but what you could do is just right click on the file and open it. Oh, wait. oh crap, but we don't. Um, I downloaded it to the desktop. It's in your downloads folder. I think that if you go. Oh, yes. Hold on. I think I know it. It's uh, <coughs> blah, blah, blah. Downloads. Mm. Is that it? No. Nah. Actually, go back to your Firefox and go to the arrow here. It should be there. Which one? Uh, the blue arrow. Oh, oh the blue arrow. Yeah. Let's see. So that was it, right? Open the folder. Not right. The, just click on the folder. Yep. And now right click on the file. Oh, okay. Is there an open with? Right click and. They don't do an open with. Open, ah, open with. with. And Here let's see if we can open it with Notepad. I think that. Uh, it's kind of ugly. Let's see. Before you modify anything, let's actually see if you're able to save, save it. As. Let's see. Save as. Yeah, this one allows you, if you go with save as all files, it retains the current extension. Oh, okay. That's something of that note that does. So you could do like that. So, okay, so if I, so, okay, so let's do this. So, so now go ahead and go fix it. Uh, F below pond there, put this in here, and then J wall pond. There's also a chance, I haven't tried, but there's a chance that if you open up with a browser, you know, a browsers open up sure. XML file. Right, they can. Maybe, but I'm not sure if you are able to modify with the browser. Within the browser. Yeah, within the browser. So do save as? Save as, and make sure that you go with all files. All files, and then just hit save. And then you save. And that should retain the extension of the file. All right, let's see. Let's test it out. Now I'm gonna go back <laughs> over here. Done. <laughs> Uh, now it's an XML, so browse. Browse. Oh, but I gotta remember it's in that temp file. Crap, what was it called? Ah. Oh, it was in the desktop. It, it was in the. <laughs> no, it wasn't desktop. Let me go back up here. In the. Hold on, I think it was in the downloads folder. It was in downloads, yeah. Duh. Browse. Go to downloads, Down sir. So maybe it's not that. Downloads, but go to documents. I think there are two downloads here. Oh no, another. No, you know uh, what? Here, let's do this. I'll do it right here again, real quick. And let's see. That's actually users, admin, app, that data, local temp. User so it's admin, ad, ad, okay. So, it's, so. Users, admin, was app data. Uh, yeah. I, uh, was it roaming? No. no, I think it was admin. Uh, I forgot downloads, maybe. Maybe. Nope. No. Hold on, let's see. That. <laughs> yeah, app data is like a hidden folder. Ah, it's a hidden folder. That sucks. Hold on, let's make it unhidden. Or just move to your desktop. That's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> yeah, you know what? This is what I should have done. Right, right over here. Open with Notepad. No, but you don't need to. No, but I'll do a file save okay. as I put it in a different directory. That's what I didn't do the first time. Do all files, right? Mm -hmm. I'll put it to the desktop. Okay. Yeah, there. it's going to be easier. Much easier. Okay. And then go <coughs> over here. XML, desktop. Yeah, that's this one right here. Mm hmm. Now we're probably going to get some error that. Oh, that's interesting. Error while rewriting the XML file, root cause illegal character. Okay, it's something else. It's no. something else. So scroll down, we'll hit done. Illegal character. Illegal character. But the thing is that since the job doesn't start, it doesn't give you uh, the detail of what's that illegal oh, what character. what it is, yeah. yeah. Hmm. 
Chill, chill. Okay, let how did it go? Were you able to work good? good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me move on, Alex, and we'll keep no problem around with that because it's a, it's a good test. Because also, even if you have that illegal character fixed, mm -hmm. I think that the fact that you have those users already in the database. You know what's interesting? That file when I opened it up, it didn't have the uh, the at signs in it. I just put them back in. Let me see if maybe that's what it was. Maybe I opened the wrong file, but. That's fine. You can continue, and I'll okay. I'll finish it. Okay. Yeah. Stay stay here with me, and we'll yeah. finish that later so that you don't miss okay. any more any other information. Okay. Answer to you. Maybe some of you were able to see what information is not transferred when doing a bulk transfer of users. Passwords. The passwords. Yeah. Don't even have to know anything about it to know that's the answer. Nothing is worse than exploiting passwords. <laughs> Backup and restore. <laughs> so when you back up system manager, you're backing up all of the product management data. You know, like all of the information that you currently have in System Manager, even information related to the applications that you're managing from System Manager. So if you're managing CM, you're gonna also gonna be backing up all of those translations. However, be aware that you cannot restore CM from that backup. So what I'm saying is that you still need to backup CM the way you do it right now. Then what good is it? Huh? What, why would you possibly it don't, like, it like the idea. It's so that later when you restore the backup, you already you don't have to synchronize with CM again, and it's already everything is already there. But there is okay. no way to restore uh, CM from that back. Not that you will ever not do synchronization with our eyes of the two backups are exactly the same. Probably pretty slim. You would probably synchronize again, right? right. Yeah, so. yeah. Because the chances that nothing <laughs> happened right. in CM during that time are just very minimal. Okay, so, but you're backing up that information and also all of the stuff related to user profile is gonna be backed up. By the way, you don't need to back up session manager because remember that system manager manages session manager, so as, as long as you back up system manager, you're backing up your session manager, okay? So system manager is the one that needs to be backed up. And then if you want, if you lose session manager, you wanna restore it, you just need to uh, run an initial synchronization between system manager and session manager and that's it. With one command, I don't know if you've seen it, init DRS, maybe you've seen it, maybe not, but that's how you initialize against the data replication between system manager and session manager. But the, the point here is that you don't need to back up session manager, you just need to back up system manager. Every time you back up system manager, you're just, just backing up a bunch of XML files. The backup file is gonna be a compressed file, but if you uncompress that file and keep uncompressing those files, at the very end you see that's just a bunch of XML files. How you backup or how you restore? You go to the backup and restore menu, and then there are gonna be two ways to backup, locally or remotely. If you backup locally, oops, if you backup locally, all you need to specify is the file name because uh, the path where the backup is gonna be stored is a default uh, path. You could change it, you know, if you want to, and as a matter of fact, in the exercise, they're gonna ask you to change that uh, path, but there is a default path that you could just leave there if you want to, and then all you need to do is specify the file name of your backup, and that's it. And that's when you're backing up locally, you know, to the same server. It doesn't say it here, but system manager stamps a uh, uh, timestamp at the very end of the name. So it would be like if you name this file Nestor or something like that, the name of the file when it's created is gonna be Nestor underscore and then the date and time where the backup happened. So but obviously you're not gonna want to back up to the hard drive that you're trying to uh, that might go down to like be the backup, right? Yeah. I mean local wouldn't be something 
local you you could do it locally and then have an application getting those files out of there or manually get it, get those out of there but probably just an application that automatically get those files out of there or just back up to a remote machine yeah. right away just like all the other services to NFS that's what everybody this would be the remote option where you specify the IP address of the remote uh, server, the port, which is always 22, either if you're using SCP or SFTP, it uses the same port. Username and password of the remote server, and then you specify the path where you want to leave the file and the name of the file. So here, in this example, they're saying that they want to leave the file in the TMP directory, and the name of the file is going to be backup. In your slide there, you don't get to choose between SCP or SFTP. Yeah, that's true. In the in the system, you do. But yeah, in, the, in this screenshot, uh, you don't get to see the the file protocol, the file transfer protocol that you want to use. But you see that the default, I think, is SCP, right? Yeah, the default one is SCP, but you could change it to SFTP. Mm, what else can I? Okay, so remember, this is the folder, the TMP, and then the name of the file. By the way, this is not a good idea to leave backups in a TMP directory. Right. Right. Because when, <laughs> when you reboot the Linux machine, those are removed. So <laughs> probably the one who created this uh, screenshot did it here because the TMP directory has write permissions for everyone. Right. So it's easy to leave the file there, but in real life, don't do it. It's not a good idea to leave files on no. the TMP directory, okay? You could, as expected, uh, schedule your backup to be run every day at some specific time or every week, however you want to handle it, or you could run it immediately. And here we see the default path where the backup uh, is created. However, remember that this is only for, for local backups. If you want to backup remotely, you do need to specify that path. And then restore, it's kind of intuitive. All you need to do is go to restore and then system manager re remembers previous backups. So from a drop down menu, you just select your backup from a list and then you restore, that's it. System manager will take at least 45 minutes to restore. Okay, so it's 45 minutes where your system manager is gonna be out of service. And remember, no service goes down. I mean, your session mark is up, your CM is up, but during those, uh, during that time, you just lose access to your system manager. Backup lab. What is that? The backup lab, the exercise is gonna be a local backup. If you want, we could try a remote backup right away, and we could use the another lab system manager as the remote server. We used to do that in some other courses, you know? So, however you want to do it, but if you want to follow the exercise, it's a local backup where you're going to leave the file, instead of in the default path, they're going to show you a place where you could change that path. So, actually, you're going to change the path to slash home slash admin instead of the, yeah, instead of the default path. And the reason why they want you to change that path is actually because if you go to the default path, with your user, with the administrator, that's gonna have no permission. That default path right. has no permission for your administrator to get the file from there. Right. So that's why they're changing it to be the whole home admin. Because that's your <coughs> user. Yeah. And then just execute the backup and make sure that it's successful. And notice that also, as an extra step in the exercise, they want you to then use WinSCP to grab that file from system manager and move it to your uh, computer, to your laptop, s just so that you can examine, like you know, like get to see the, how, the, oh. the, how the file looks like. You're gonna see it's a zip file, not a zip file, sorry, but a compressed file. Mm -hmm. Let me see if they see here. 
you could use Win SCP, oh, sorry, Win zip, but actually we have WinRAR on the laptop right. to unzip the file or uncompress the file. And they want you to use, okay, actually it's going to be a tar.gc file, it's a compressed file in Linux okay. that you could uncompress. And then what they want you to do is get to see some XML files, in this case the inventory XML, just so that you get to see some information. I mean, in real life, you would never have to uncompress that file and do all of this, but right. the one who created the exercise simply wants you to, you know, get to see that at the very end, it's just a bunch of XML files. Okay, give it a try, let me know how it goes. This is an exercise that you need to do with your lab partner because only one bucket can run at the same time. Yeah, sure. Services. I'm going to do this as a local. We're going to change the default path to the top of the place. So that gets up to We're going to put in it in here. Common. B A R. Oh, so, okay. Well, right now it looks like it's all just blank. We will change that default That angered the backup guy. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of hitting the fresh, I hit something else. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Backup in progress. Please retry this operation. Thank you so much. Okay, well, it's blank. So I can't check the status. So we will change that default path. Okay. Now we're going to... Okay. Home services. Configuration. Five minutes, but it oh. could take <laughs> a little well, I don't have five minutes. <laughs> it could even take longer if you have a lot of information mm -hmm. in your system on it. It's funny is it doesn't get the status either. You're just okay. running or stuttering. Configurations. Success took two minutes, all right. Did you change the path? I'm curious about. Okay. Settings. Let me see actually the just one. Let me see. Element map. Yeah, so it just adds the manual folder. You see, you only specify the one and then it adds that manual folder. Okay. There you go. Okay. Yep. Oh, maybe it'll show it once it's done. And then we change it. We want to change it to home admin. Wouldn't you wait? I have no patience. No patience at all. Zero. It said 45 minutes for that restore. I just retired. I, I, didn't, give, I didn't get any patience. I wasn't giving none. <laughs> no. My mama oh. didn't give me none. Now we go to back to the restore. Oh, okay. I think they were just showing us an example. And then we're doing. No, yeah, nothing backup. Backup. Local. Local. Running? Uh, yeah, it said it was running. Lab 10, lab 10. I got it, I got it mad too. 10, yeah, back up, that's cool. Did they want to schedule yep. or now? Now, right? Now. Yeah. Service now. Okay, service, service later. I'm sure I got it back successfully. Let's see. Yeah. It's running. Man. Running. Got ma it got mad at me because I kept hitting re refresh. Yeah, that's what it did. That's, that's you? <laughs> Is that what you said? The backup guys were angry? I went out of buttons. I'm trying to refresh something. Oh. Close those two tabs. Yeah. And then try going back in. Close it on success. I guess we'll be waiting. After some time. Took you two minutes, you said? Uh, yeah, but that's CPU. No, they seem like a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if, like, if you were in a real world scenario where everyone's, like, on, on you, all the eyes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
What's taking so long? Oh, here it is. It's still running. It's still running. But it will never update that until you hit the refresh. But I could anger the backup perhaps again. Maybe not. There you go. There you go. We're good. Sure that there's backup on the other side. Just like Tommy Lee said, it's all good. Now open up with SCP. Oh. On your desktop? On your desktop. Okay. Was it 10.7? Yep. yep. Also, that happens a lot in other screens, other pages. If you double click instead of only one click, it's like the first click try to accomplish the action, and the second one, with the second one, you get an error. That's a good sign. So the left side is your local, mm -hmm. right side is the system manager. So what we want to do now. Drag across, right? Local, I can do it. Yeah. SCP, navi navigate to home. Yeah. SCP, so go That's to. I'm in home, Gonzo. Yeah, uh, Hit that up arrow in home. Oh, oh, sorry about that. Uh, okay. Yeah, here it is. And what is it, an address? Oh, it's home. Home? Admin. This Admin. Yeah, because that's where we placed it. Ooh. No. We go to. Let's do that again. Uh, What's under Gonzo over there? Navigate to home. Admin, Admin manual. Admin manual. But we went in as. Uh, we didn't go oh, in. Oh, go home Gonzo. Yeah, right. because I, I was logged in as Gonzo. You don't have a manual. No, no. Uh, did you change. But, but did you change the path to slash home slash. Gonzo instead of slash. Oh no, you did admin. No, I did admin. <laughs> That's right. Okay, and so, log, so, so log out of WinSCP as Gonzo and log in as admin. No, no, no. Oh, I did, no? Let's see, maybe it allows you to go to the admin menu with Gonzo. Well, we tried, but it, it blocks you. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's denied. It's it denied. Ah, okay, so you're absolutely right. Just so trying to log in with admin. Okay. So hit session. I'm navigating where at? session where it told me to. However, oh, it's kind of strange, you know, that still allows you to save the file. There. I know, right? <laughs> okay. Now we're going to this. Log in as you are. Oh, yeah. And then into that seven. Admin. And then it's uh, C1, COE, one, two, three, bang. And then from there. Yeah, we forgot about that. That's right, because we reached out because he sent it to another user. <laughs> Ah, look yeah, at this. Home nice. admin manual. And there it is. I can probably drag Locate this across. Your backup file. Yeah. Right, yeah. Which you did. Yeah, I, I just tried. Left I'm click your backup. Oh, you did. I already did. Because with this, you can also just click and drag it across, too. Yep. All right. Double click. I don't, I don't think you're going to be able to open it. Right. But at least we have it. At least now I know we transferred over to uh, documents. What did you throw it? I threw it in documents, I think. Yep. Yep. Is this this is it. It's this one. No, this is the one. Now you you want to use the uh, WinRAR to open it. That's the OPD. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, right uh -huh. Extract. Yeah. Just double click on it. Locate the inventory. XML. Uh, well, uh, is there something before that, like EMT data? No, actually go back. You saw that, didn't you? I'm like, no, Just no, click no. on the, on the <laughs> two dots. I was and then, and then I think it was what, OPT? Like, is that what no, it is? I think it was. Have a look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y
browse around, you find your user somewhere, probably not, not that pad, but some other pad, probably under OPT as well. There's a chance that it's under OPT as well. So I'm in OPT already. Let me see. Well, let's see. OPTC. Actually, go one higher. Yeah. Okay, no, so go there. Okay. Yeah. EMJ, APC, go to OPT, OPT, Avaya, okay. uh, conference, install data, APT, JBoss, management, skill, huh? go to VSP. VSP? Voice. Yeah, no, this is something else. Just uh, management, maybe, 79. No. Users. Let's see, go one up. And go to yeah, go to that one. Go there. Uh, no, it's not there. Go. Uh, I doubt it's etc. But go ahead. Oh no, that's that's not. Go to that one. Avaya. No, go to Avaya. Nope. Nope. You know what? Go back to OPT. Mm -hmm. And go, yeah, Avaya and try the first one. AUS. That one has no, it's alarm. Search for conference install data. Those are certificates. Conferencing. Install data. That was where we were, right? That's where we were. I think it was J. I thought you guys said J. Boss, but let's see IPTC. IPTCM. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. No. Yeah. Yeah. J. Boss. No, that's not gonna be. Wow. That, I'm telling you. Just totally out of my Wow. Management? Management. Really, I think Should we tried that one. I think we did, yeah. No, Objects? Yeah. Yeah. Mm, your keys? I don't think so. Yeah. Spirit. Config. Let's see. Did no, you know, no. It wasn't in the inventory. No. no. Unless they, unless when we did the backup, there's some fields. Maybe there are things you can exclude. Right? No, no, no. It just does everything, right? Yeah. Uh, VSP. Go one more time to VSP. Because uh, is it me? Yeah, no. <laughs> go but all the way up to the me? very beginning where you see the main folders. This one. Yeah, it's a double click there. Yeah. On this? Yeah. Let me see. Did we explore everything? Yeah, I think we did. What about VAR? Did we explore that one? I think we did. Vaya. Explore that one. Go one up. What about the, the, the second one? We didn't explore. This one. <laughs> no. Do you know what the name of it is? No, I have no idea. Uh, go one ba uh, up. And go to Avaya. Go to the Avaya one. So back to Avaya. And try SIP. Uh, no, that's going to be the SIP firewall. Right, uh, Yeah. So go one up. And go one up. Huh. OPT. I do. I know for sure that the users are there because there, we actually had an exercise before where you had to remove users mm -hmm. and restore them from the backup from the and get backup. to see the, oh, right. the users were. Because it's the same thing. It's an XML file also. Yeah, I just don't know where where it is. Uh, I guess one way we could figure this out, if you're curious about it, is extract the file to a folder and then do a search on Windows, a Windows search, looking for one of the login names. Ooh. And that'll give you the, the path that's where a, the file is. That's good. All right, so let me do that. Uh, so here Might take a while, you know, but it'll yeah. eventually find it. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Extracts here. However, let's see what time it is. Let me move on. Alex, and okay, sure. we can try that. I'm curious now. You know, see where's that part where the users are. But let me move on, and then maybe during the lunch break we'll give it a try. Okay. Or before we go to lunch, we'll leave the search running. Okay.
what types of data come on come back Sorry. here okay no 